Hey everybody, welcome to week three, and yes, I had to shave, so really brings out my double chin. Okay, I'm excited for this week. It is going to be a good week, I think, for you. We, are, we have one assignment this week. It is the selection of the sport or subject for your final paper. Uh, there's no points, so it's graded as complete and incomplete. So basically what we need to do is we've got the readings, we've got the usual... Um, the usual discussion board things. And then, yeah, on Wednesday, I'm going to need you to uh, select your subject and uh, for the final paper. Now, one thing that I would suggest as well, and I don't, this isn't really necessarily part of the assignment explicitly, but, um, and maybe I'll add this after I get done, that uh, with this assignment, I would also come up with a research question, some sort of question to go along with this. So you've got a sport or a subject for your final paper, and then you've got maybe a question or a hypothesis. And so what you're going to do with this paper, with this, this final paper, which is a, just a short research paper, is try to answer that question doing a little bit of research. And so we're talking today about methods. We talked last week a little bit about theory. And so as we talk about theory and method, so then what we're going to do is try to answer a research question. So, for example, um, one of the things that I've studied before was like uh, framing during the deflate gate controversy. And so I asked some questions, you know, how are people in these stories framed? Are they framed positively, negatively, neutral? You know, are there any descriptors uh, with people? So, you know, I looked at Tom Brady and Roger Goodell and Bill Belichick. And so I just went through a whole bunch of text, did a content analysis, added up the numbers and what that's called a quantitative study. And so we're going to be taking a look at a couple of different methods. I've got a couple of notes that I want to read from with this. Um, so that I might, I might do just a touch of reading to go with this, but uh, again, here is our uh, sport and society analysis paper, critical analysis paper. Now it doesn't necessarily have to be critical. You could do a um, content analysis, which isn't necessarily critical in nature, but um, looking for proper formatting, um, tell about the problem or the history of whatever it is you're um, um, studying here. This is called a literature section. And then you need to state a research question or a hypothesis. Okay. So a hypothesis is something that you set out to prove or disprove. Um, and then a research question is simply, you know, I've got a question. Let's try to find the answer. And here's what I found. Okay. So you need a communication theory, uh, your sample and the method and the sample are pretty closely related. And then it's, here's my, the results. And then we're going to say, well, here's what I think about the results and does it match up with the previous literature? So that's that rubric. If you have questions, please email me. I know I'm going through things kind of really fast. I apologize. Um, but I kind of want to make sure that it's maybe a little bit briefer. You know, this is, it's a good little project. Um, and I think it'll be a good exercise for you. Okay. Welcome back. Video two, as promised, we're going to talk a little bit about your method and your sample for the final paper. Okay. So, um, we want to talk about, we first introduced a, a theory, theoretical lens through which you can look at your topic. Your assignment this week is to choose a topic. And then I also ask you to come up with a research question, something that you can answer doing a little bit of research. Okay. So we're going to talk a little bit about how to answer that question then. So if you have a research question and you want to say, you know, how many times is something mentioned or what do people say about this? Or let's talk a little bit about that. So first I want to talk a little bit about data um, uh, or data, you know, depending on how you want to pronounce it. So there's generally two kinds of data when it comes to um, research and media studies and um, communication studies. There's quantitative and qualitative. Those of you who have taken our research class before, and there's a few of you, will know a little bit about this. Quantitative numbers. We're looking for numbers, all right? So if I've got a quantitative study and my research question is, you know, um, how many, uh, let's see, I've got an example here I'm looking at. 
you know, uh, if you want to talk about counting up the number of times a word is said in a story, like um, maybe you want to look at, uh, you've got a research question. Let's take the uh, some kind of football controversy. Um, we've got some Jack Del Rio comments that recently came out. And so what you can do is you could um, do this a couple of different ways. Um, so if you wanted to do a quantitative study on that, and you had a question about, you know, like, how is the media covering Jack Del Rio? And so you could say, um, well, maybe I'm just going to look at 30 news articles from around the country and just um, search in those news articles for specific terms. Like, um, you know, you can look for words that may indicate bias or you may look for words that indicate um, some sort of concept that would reveal a critique of the media. So if you feel like the media is not is giving him a pass or if you feel like the media is blowing this up out of nothing, you know, either way, that's a, both a left and a right. You're coming at it from you choose one. OK, so, and I've seen both. I've seen both that he's being given a pass, that it's a slap on the wrist. I've seen others like, well, you're making a big deal about nothing. OK, so. I've seen it both. Well, let's research it. All right. So let's say I want to look at 30 articles. I'm going to I'm going to get 30 articles and then I'm going to examine those for keywords and count those up and try to reveal any bias. All right. So that would be one quantitative way of studying this topic in the media. All right. Another might be to do a survey. So let's say you wanted to, to put together a short survey and find out how what people think about his comments all right and so uh let's say you ask them to rate on a scale of one to seven how pleased they are with the coverage or um the topic and so you can again that's another way of uh, getting quantitative data that you could um count up what people think and then divided by the number of responses. And, and there we've got sort of this quantitative analysis. All right. And I'm not going to ask you to do anything too complex with it. It's just like, what do people think? And let's take a look at it because this isn't really a, it's not necessarily a real in-depth, detailed research course. Although you could go further with it if you like, um, there's software that's available to do the kind of analysis, the analysis that if we wanted to do a really serious analysis, we can, but if you're, if you're surveying people um, and you've got a lot of people that you want to survey or try to get as many people to respond to your survey as possible, excellent. I think that's that would be great. And so let's talk a little bit about the other type of data then, um, which would be qualitative. So we covered quantitative in this recording just briefly for this class, which is not a super in-depth class. So I'll catch you in the third video. All right, welcome back. We're um, video number three. We're going to briefly discuss qualitative data. Um, I would suggest two different forms of qualitative data. So as we look here at the rubric of the final paper, we've got a portion here called sample. All right. So if we talk about, we talked before about with the qualitative study, a sample. So if I was to study 20 or 30 news articles, that would be your sample. If I was to survey 30 people, that's your sample. All right. Now, if we are looking for qualitative data, now qualitative data is generally in the form of statements or quotes. So statements from the text is evidence of what you're trying to say. That's we're doing this textual analysis. That is your method. So we're pulling out data from the text. So if we still wanted to continue along the um, our, our hypothetical, theoretical Jack Del Rio um, investigation. So we've got research question about him. So let's say we wanted to do it qualitatively. If I wanted to look at how um, that story is being portrayed in the media, but do a textual analysis, I could pull out comments. I can pull out statements as evidence of what um, to try to answer your question. All right. So if we're trying to answer a question about this, if you feel like um, 
uh, this isn't any big deal, or if you feel like it's not being made of, if he's being given a slap on the wrist, if you're looking for evidence of that in those stories, you can look at a few stories, maybe 10 stories, and pull out quotes, pull out statements, not necessarily quotes, I would say, just pull out information from those stories and use it as evidence. So instead of counting up, you would just simply pull out certain phrases for this textual qualitative analysis as evidence uh, to try to answer your question, all right? Now, the other type of qualitative evidence that we generally use are quotes. And so you can interview a few people. Let's say you want to interview three people about Jack Del Rio comments and their portrayal in the media. So I just, I can't emphasize this enough. We want to understand how issues are being represented in the media. So it needs to be media centric. So I've got a subject, it needs to be connected to the media. When you uh, give me your topic, I will say, if you don't include something about how it's being portrayed in the media, then I'm gonna ask you to uh, maybe resubmit or tell you that you need to change it. So if you wanna interview a few people, then those the quotes that you get during your interviews are data that can answer your questions. That's qualitative data. So you're going to interview them. You're going to ask them a few questions. You're going to find out their responses. Here's what people say. You might try to target a few specific demographics to say, okay, well, um, among three people in this age group of this gender, their response to my questions about Jack Del Rio, here are some of their responses. And you use those responses to answer, que answer your research question. So you're, you may have a research question or a hypothesis, let's say um, that you are suggesting that uh, what Jack Del Rio, the punishment that, he getting, that he's getting is not fair. It's not strict enough. So you might ask three or four people in a specific demographic about that and then gauge their responses. And that would be your qualitative data. Now, I must tell you that you may not have your research question answered the way that you would like or your hypothesis. Your hypothesis may be disproven. Now, a hypothesis is a statement that you use that you try to prove or disprove. OK, generally try to disprove. Well, either way. Um, so I want you I, I want it to be clear, though, that if you receive responses that disagree with what you think, you're simply going to give me those responses in the results, okay? I, if it's, if it's answered, if it's not answered, if they don't answer the way you want, it's okay, it's simply data. We're trying to take ourselves a little bit out of it, I think, in this particular assignment, all right? So, okay, so um, that last video cut off just a little bit, but I was, at the end of making my point. All right, so um, we wanna make sure that all these things are spelled out pretty clearly. I will show you next week an example of a final paper that I'm looking at and walk you through the sections. Right now, you just need to think about your subject. Make sure it relates to the media. All right, uh, onto my comments, and, and this works into the comment, the last comment that I wanted to make um, basically about the, um, the last assignment, which was our second, um, story critique, um, really good engagement with the content, but for a few of you, there was no engagement with the article itself, how it was portrayed in the media. So it's good that you have a, an understanding of the subject, but we need to know how it was interpreted in the media. And so that's kind of what this um, class is about in a lot of ways that um, if you use specific examples, remember if you use specific examples from the story, that's qualitative data, which every one of you did. So you provided qualitative data, but then you never really analyzed necessarily or used it to analyze the story itself. A few of you did. I, it was about half and half. So I just wanted to remind you 
that um, this course is about sports in media. So therefore your research needs to have an element of media. You're examining it in the media and that's kind of our lens. So when we think about these theories, they're designed to help us investigate how your subject is portrayed in the media. So it can be, I want it to be pretty specific. So if we think about our Jack Del Rio example, yeah, we want it to be specific. We want to make sure that we're examining something that, um, that we can answer that if you have a, a, a really specific research question, if you're just going to say, uh, I want to study the NCAA in media, that's way too broad. Okay. Uh, but if you want to say, I want to study media portrayals of the University of Oklahoma softball team during their championship game, great, nice and specific. And that's exactly what we're looking for. So this small research project, I will show you an example of it next week in our next week video. I want you this week to settle on a topic and be thinking about how you want to examine it. I would suggest making sure that you have a research question along with your topic right now. You can change your research question further down the line, but be thinking about a question you have about this. You know, it could be, how is it portrayed? How do people think how it's being portrayed? Um, you know, uh, what are the types of statements that are being used in the portrayal of this? But it needs to be media related. OK, so if you have any questions, please let me know. I took a great uh, question from one of your classmates uh, earlier um, uh, over the weekend. And so i um, grateful for that. I hope that everybody's keeping up with the discussion boards. Just looking for quick comments on those. Uh, you could skim it if you need to. We talked about that before. All right, everybody have a great week. Please email me if you have questions and I will try to get back to you. All right. Have a good one. Thanks.